This is another <laughs> this is an iconic piece, literally cross-dressing. It's um, Barbara Streisand in the film Yentl, and it's called Double um, uh, Double Double Yentl, My Elvis, for obvious reasons. <laughs> I guess I don't know if you've seen the film Yentl. Um, yeah. uh, this is sixteen Barbaras from the Jewish Jackie series. Um, there's a couple of shots of the studios that I visited in, in New York. Um, this is Deborah Cass's studio with uh, some uh, Chairman Mars in the background. And this is Lydia Donna looking apprehensive in her studio. Um, it's Lisa Hoke's studio. And uh, Jessica Stockholder's studio in Brooklyn. Um, I mean, it's a very, uh, again, as I said, that, you know, I think my research question didn't come from my studio practice at the time. It came from meeting and seeing and thinking about other artists' work. And I think the, the particular materiality of these artists' work was really important for me as well. Um, that, you know, even now when I look back at these images, I'm transported back to that, that moment when I, um, the whole question of my research sort of coalesced or congealed, depending on how you put it. Um, so we, at the time I was making, uh, as I said, black and white paintings um, from ink and washing up liquid and uh, house paint. Um, and I was interested in working with archival images of modernist interiors and um, introducing a kind of sense of impurity and dirt and contamination. So. Um, I think that they, looking back on them, they seem to be kind of hunting grounds for something that um, that became clearer and, and more sort of pertinent later on in my practice as an artist. Um, but just to say a little bit about the conclusion of my thesis, and we're on twenty minutes. Okay, ten more minutes. Okay. Um, was that the one of the conclusions I came to with um, the question of of drag and cross-dressing was that um, I used Susan Sontag's formulation of camp in this, was that um, I was looking through modernism at that in a way that um, it became, I, there was a kind of empathic uh, critique that it wasn't a cynical um, use or interest in, in modernism, it was one in which um, I guess the, the high drama and the high seriousness of abstract expressionism and late modernism could be camped up in drag and used for alternative purposes. And um, what I was really doing, I guess, was, was creating a masculine other to, from a position as a woman to say that uh, masculinity can be an other and therefore um, dislodge the position of woman as other. So there was a whole section in my sort of written research which was really about this question of um, the configuration of the feminine within discourse and how essentially the four artists women's work who I was working with created a position to speak from as a woman where masculinity could be camped up and positioned as something other and therefore the whole comedy of a kind of Lacanian um, sort of subject object was thrown into disarray. Um, so. Um, these were the, the paintings that I was making. Um, and this, this, so this takes us up to, I guess, the uh, sort of mid 90s. Um, and then I'm going to jump to 2005 um, and uh, to a piece that I made following the Whitney program uh, after a residency in South Korea. And uh, this piece is called As Grown. So, to be concise, which I will have to be because I'm running out of time, um, I, I found a way of entering a kind of photographic archive and physically sort of um, embodying being in that space. So I would take photographs uh, using a shutter release and a timer. And all the photographs um, were taken in, using colour film. Um, so everything in front of the camera is in a kind of black and white register, using makeup and props and um, wigs and costumes. Uh, so kind of going against the grain of modernism, but also it became quite a performative space. And 
the idea of painting as a performance, I guess, becomes congealed and coalesced in, finally in this sort of photographic practice where um, the gesture isn't one of a, a pain mark, it's one of um, making and physically, physically being inside the archive itself. Um, this is the, uh, the piece that you can see behind you on the wall um, that was at the Henry Moore Institute, um, based on a photograph of Charlotte Perriot on a chaise long um, that she co-designed with Le Cabusier. And this was the installation at the Henry Moore Institute. And all the, um, the images were taken again with, um, with colour film. And this was the original photograph that I was sort of working with. So um, I'm aware that I'm running out of time. So have I got a few more minutes to... Uh, five more minutes, OK. Um, I guess one of the things that happened really sort of post my doctoral research was that I, I found a way of, of making paintings, as using paintings as research, and using, the, if you like, the kind of um, the practice of painting rather than actually coming up with a, something that was on canvas. And um, as I said, uh, the fact that I would use a shutter release and, uh, a, uh, or a timer to take the photographs meant that um, I could physically be in the work and there was also an accidental element to taking the photographs that you, that some of the, I might just nip back, um, yeah, some of the elements in the photograph, like the little pink um, block on the right hand side, were things that appeared by accident, but they kind of chimed quite um, harmoniously with uh, something that, things that happened in the rest of the Photograph. But these, if, if I had been in front of the camera, um, behind or behind the camera taking the photograph, I would have edited that out. So the kind of fluid space of making a painting, its kind of uh, material quality and the kind of contingency and the way that materiality intervenes in whatever you make, um, became very much part of my practice as a photographer. And I mean, I guess the key concerns that that came through were um, the question of the accidental, but also the question of the impurities within modernism, with um, that modernism as something that was uh, a complex and contradictory category, that, um, that within the history of modernism, it's not entirely about a kind of formal trajectory, that there are personalities, there are politics, there are social and cultural upheavals and ruptures that all contribute Toward the formation of modernism, um, the the image here is a is actually the this was the starting point of the the piece that I made at the Henry Moore Institute, and it's a collage um, made from tracing paper and pencil and uh, silver paper, and it became the it became a kind of three D installation that I then inhabited as the um, as a substitute for Charlotte Perrion lying on the chaise longue. And Charlotte Perrion's signature ball-bearing necklace, which she wears in the photograph, in my, in my recreation of that image, um, has kind of come apart and scattered along the floor. And I see, I saw this as a kind of analogy, in a way, for kind of modernism's kind of dispersal and um, its inability to be gathered up and made into a neat um, containing ring. Um, I'm going to show one more project and then I think I'm, I'm probably done. Um, this is a nice uh, sort of sister piece to the, uh, the Charlotte Perriand work that I showed at the Henry Moore Institute. It was made in 2009 and um, it's called The African Chair for Gunter Sturzel. And um, it's based on a number of different archival photographs, um, one of which is of... Um, Gunther Stutzel and Marcel Brewer's African chair that they worked on together at the Bauhaus. So um, in this image, the, the makeup that I'm wearing is kind of coming off and uh, I mean this is the, was it became the interesting thing about the coming as a, a sort of practitioner in painting that um, it was a very physical act of putting on makeup and um, uh, adjusting colour and that it, all the things that I would, work, would be working on in, you know, as, a, as a painter kind of um, were there in my 
practice as a, as a photographer. Um, and also the, the sense in which you know, multiple elements were kind of overlaid and uh, sort of placed within the, the same space. So um, I feel that I've covered a lot, but, not, <laughs> but actually not, not a huge amount. But I don't know whether <coughs> um, this is probably time to stop, because I'm on the half hour mark. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <coughs> um, Thanks, that's, that's yeah. probably enough. And I think